I have picked out a pattern that I want to spin for. So I have a bunch of wool in my craft room. <laughs> quite a lot that I would like to create projects out of. Uh, one of those wools is uh, Carrie Hill. So from a Carrie Hill sheep that I purchased uh, over a year ago. And I have been storing it in the closet in a plastic bag. And this past summer I got around to washing it and now I'm into uh, processing it, so combing and carding and dyeing, <laughs> right? And so I've been uh, combing and carding and dyeing and spinning up samples, and I created a couple of small objects out of those samples. And so now I've got a sense of what this wool is like, you know, how soft is it, how does it spin, uh, how well does it take dye and just, you know, really getting to know the Carrie Hill fiber, which is super fun. So now I'm to the point where, okay, what am I going to make out of this wool? So <laughs> I have a, quite a bit of it, more than enough for this project I've picked out and probably one or two more. Um, yeah, so the idea here is to start with what do I want to make and work from there. So what is it that I want to make out of my Carrie Hill wool? I want to make the Librarian Vest, which is a pattern by Skein Deer Knits. So I bought this pattern. I was perusing Ravelry for vest patterns. Um, I'd really like to have a another vest in my wardrobe. I only have two vests and I don't have one like the librarian vest. So I want to create this. Uh, it looks beautiful uh, with the patterning. Patterning uh, looks like it, it fits well. Um, Skeender Knits does a nice job of writing for various sizes. Um, and so I'm really excited to create this. I was looking around on projects that others had created. Um, so on Ravelry, you can look at the pattern, you can see what comments folks have made, you can see who is is knitting that pattern, or any craft, right, crocheting. Um, and so I went and looked around other folks' projects, and everyone seems to be making it out of solid colors, which makes sense the the pattern is really gonna pop if the yarn is more quiet so okay I, I want to spin for this project but I don't want to just spin a solid color yarn not right now I, I, I you know I made a blending board I'm dying different colors like I want to play with color but let's tone it down and just play with color a little bit. So let's take a look at the colors that I dyed for this project. Okay, so in my December makes video uh, for December 2021, I showed um, some Carrie Hill wool, here it is, that I had been dyeing up um, for a project. And I also had some natural and some light blue. And I wasn't sure what I was going to make out of it at that point. And now that I've decided I need to tone down the colors a little bit and be a little, a little more, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Kind of creating a deeper, denser color rather than combining a bunch of different colors. So I decided to go with green, right? So I've got this darker green and this lighter green. And I also dyed up some black. And I think that's going to look really nice. And I thought, why well, I, I don't want it to just be green. So I also dyed up, here it is, some teal. <laughs> 
So it'll be, you know, like a tealy, tealy dark green, if you will. So I want to combine these four colors to create my yarn. So I um, was thinking about how to combine these four colors. So I was looking at the yarn in the pattern. Uh, the yarn for the pattern uh, calls, it, the pattern calls for a worsted weight yarn. And since I have four colors, I feel like, how do you split four colors into a three ply? <laughs> uh, yeah, so I'm thinking uh, I could do a four ply, right, where each one of these is its own color and ply them together. But let's be honest, I don't know if I have enough bobbins to do that because I would need five bobbins. Yeah, um, so I'm thinking a two-ply yarn. So that means two colors for each ply. So, <laughs> uh, so those are the options, right? So being a math person, I'm like, how many different permutations can you get of uh, four colors in two groups, right? <laughs> And the answer is three. <laughs> so there are three different ways I could split up these colors into two plies, right? And then combine them together. So what I did is I spun up those three different combinations, okay? Um, I did a little sample for each to see what that would look like um, and what that would spin like and it was real quick uh, I wasn't spinning for uh, worsted weight necessarily just really quickly getting a sense of the color right because I don't want stripes showing up in in the sweater so I want to make sure that when I'm uh, blending these colors and when I'm spinning that I'm mindful of creating that consistency, right? With a little variation, just not so much variation that it's striping, right? So here's what I came up with. So here are my three tiny swatches. Uh, trying out these different color combinations and I just use you know scrap paper here to <laughs> write them down so in this one uh, one of the plies was the black with light green and the other ply was teal with dark green and this is what the swatch looks like which from far away you know just looks like this beautiful deep rich green and I think it has great dimension to it in terms of color. I think the pattern will read really nicely like this. So there's that one. And it is a, a very small sample, so I don't know how well I'm going to see <laughs> stripes and things, but I'm just getting a... I wanted to see if these three look like really different or really similar. The next one has uh, dark green with the black and teal with the light green. And that's what this one looks like. And then the third one has the two greens together, light and dark, and then black and teal in the other ply. And that's what this one looks like. So I will say I did not um, use my blending board because the amount of fiber I used in these samples was so, so small. It, I don't, I feel like it wouldn't have come off the blending board very easily. Um, so there are some sections here where like in the green on green ply, there was dark green, only dark green for a stretch and only light green for a stretch. And then you can kind of see that in the swatch, right? There's a bit of striping where there's a lot of dark green here and a lot of light green here. 
and that's what I want to avoid. So I think I'd need to pay attention to that in my drafting, in my spinning. Because otherwise, if you look at these three samples, like I've had to keep them with their labels here because honestly, they look so similar, which is super cool. So does it matter how I combine these colors in those two plies? Not really, not in any significant way. I think these three all look pretty much the same. So it's going to be about how I spin them. Okay. Um, yeah, I just did it quick and dirty. So it's not, it's not the best spin. I mean, it's pretty good, but I didn't, um, <laughs> I, uh, I did set the twist by wetting the fiber, but um, it was such a small amount of yarn. I didn't thwack it or anything like that. So, I mean, there's definitely room for improvement. I just wanted a really quick, you know, in a day, could I spin it and knit my samples? And I did. So, yeah, so I'm pretty excited. So it really doesn't matter which of these three combos I do. I just need to pay attention while I'm spinning. So now that I know the pattern I'm knitting and what kind of yarn I need, I have a sense of the color combinations. Um, I think what I'm going to do is use my blending board to help me control that color. <laughs> so I don't want to just completely blend dark gray and light gray to make medium or dark green and light green to make medium green. But I do want to uh, use the blending board to help me keep those fibers together. Um, because what I did for these samples is I took a fluff of dark green and a fluff of light green and I just tried to draft them together from those two separate tufts. <laughs> and so if I could use the blending board to put them together in some roving, then that could help me keep both colors throughout the ply instead of a big patch of dark green and then a big patch of light green. Um, so that's what I'm going to be looking into next is kind of finishing off this fiber preparation so that I can actually start spinning. So it was really nice to figure out that it doesn't really matter how I combine these colors in the plies. Uh, in the knitted samples, it all pretty much looks the same, which is really awesome. But I did decide on doing the dark green with the black in one ply and teal with the light green in the other ply. So I'm going to do uh, use my blending board here to uh, mix those up. So this is a blending board that um, that I put together. I ordered the carding cloth and Michael helped me. <laughs> he made the board for me to fasten it to and so I'm going to do that. Um, so a couple things that's going to help me with. Uh, number one, the so the teal I combed and carded and as you can see it's still really fluffy. This is the last color that I uh, combed, but the earlier colors are more matted down because I put them in plastic bags and squish the air out and, you know, just trying to save space. So the, their fibers are a little bit compacted, which is probably part of the drafting issues I had in those samples. So put them on the blending board, kind of loosen up those fibers a bit more. I'm going to do a, uh, I'm going to pull it off through my Diz and it's a heart shaped Diz and do a, um, more of a worsted prep and a worsted spin. So, um, this, that was one of my samples, right, of this fiber. I spun a woolen, woolen 
uh, prep and spin or a woolen prep with a worsted spin. I did a woolen prep with a woolen spin and I did a, a worsted prep with a worsted spin. <laughs> and I like the, the worsted prep with the worsted spin the best. Um, you know, the, the yarn is smoother and more, more even, which is what you expect from a worsted prep and a worsted spin. Uh, and I just really like that. It's soft, it's still really warm, uh, and, and that's what I would like to go for. Again, for this vest, I really want the crossover stitches to, to stand out, and I think a worsted style yarn is going to do really nicely with that. So, so I'm not going to be blending with the intention of like really blending the colors together. I still want them to be distinct in the yarn but uh, I would like to reduce the possibility of striping, make my drafting easier, and so I'm gonna have fun using my blending board to finish off this prep. And once I'm finished with the prep, I can start spinning. <laughs> All right, so I'm just gonna, yeah, put I think I'll put a layer of green down and then black on top and then, you know, go from there. Oh yeah, that's what I was saying. See, I got a phone call in the middle of recording and it <laughs> threw me off. So what I was saying when I was so rudely interrupted <laughs> is that the way that I um, have already uh, prepared this fiber is I, I combed it, right? Which does kind of separate out the longer fibers from the shorter fibers. Which is cool, but I just want to use, you know, all the fibers. And so what I did is I took the longer fibers off the comb, the shorter fibers off the comb, and I carded them together. So <laughs> it's already been kind of woolen prepared by carding it. And so now I'm putting it back on the blending, on the blending board, but then gonna, you know, pull it off in roving, which should keep the long and short fibers in here. So we're not separating those things out from each other. All right, that's probably... Okay. 
There's the dark green. And now for some black. Oh, that looks so pretty on the camera. Wow. <laughs> I am really excited about this project. Oh, it just brings me a lot of joy. I have to, I gotta go see what's going on outside. It's pretty nice. Just trying to see. It seems like I have a, <laughs> a lot more black than green. Which is bizarre, but okay. I think that's probably a good. I'll just put a little more black in here. I'm wanting it to be pretty equal between the four colors. But I don't want to be super uh anal about this project and like weigh everything out at every step and I mean I could do that I could be very calculated in in the blending but I don't want to be okay I'm happy with that. So let's pull this off of here using the Diz, which should be fun. So this is my Diz. It's got a couple of different sizes. I'm gonna go with the larger one. And then there's this uh, hook. It's a, it's a metal loop trying to catch the light there we go so um put this through the hole and then catch the fiber in here and pull it through to get it started so let's see if i can do this y'all i'm excited So I hooked it around the fiber there, 
and I'm going to pull it through that bigger hole. Okay. And yeah, I'm just going to go across. And I'm not getting all the green up off of there. Where are my straight needles? Yeah, yeah. Come over here and mix in with that. <laughs> okay. Over here, stay on this side. Obviously, you can tell I'm not a pro at this. And I'm okay with that. <laughs> All righty. Ooh, 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 ooh. Yeah, that'll do. Wow, look how thick that is. Maybe I should have done the smaller. Maybe I should have done the smaller hole. Look at how big this is. Still. <laughs> but that's nice. See how there's there is black and there is green like throughout the whole thing and that was the whole point of this so sweet there's a bit of roving see this thin bit here though mm -mm -mm -mm. like it's coming apart let's just go ahead and just whip whip that off there and so yeah there's one piece of roving Oh, wow, that is so cool. I see, can you see that? So the roving goes this way, but the fiber is going like this. So I, <laughs> I don't believe that this is still like a worsted prep because not everything's going the same way this way, <laughs> but that's okay. I think it looks really neat. So I'm going to keep doing this. And my husband's going to keep calling me while I'm recording. So for the other ply, I'm going to blend the light green with the teal. So I'm just going to do the same thing I did with the green, dark green and the black.
So the plan is that the, the dark green with the black will be one ply of the yarn and the light green with the teal will be the other ply. So it'll be a two ply yarn and you know all the colors should be present throughout the yarn. I really do like my blending board a lot. I think I'm going to need a better solution than this paintbrush <laughs> to push the fiber in. But um, honestly, I have, we have a few um, like dog hair combs for Marjorie, <laughs> our dog. Uh, but the, they're not like this. They're not like this carding cloth. Um, they have thicker tines and they're farther apart. And it doesn't, it doesn't slide nicely through here. It gets stuck. Um, I don't really have any other tools around that we already own that would be you know, good substitutes for that. So. I mean, I don't know. I don't really want to use. You don't want to use one of your like full hand cards on here, would you? I don't know. Anyway, those little um, dog brushes that have tines similar to the carding cloth, I feel like they're really, it would be a really affordable option and easily accessible. Um, you know, not something you have to find at a specialty store, but something you could get at um, Walmart or Target or your uh, local grocery store in the pet section. So. Like I have a grocery store a half mile away that I could walk to and they have, you know, the tiniest pet section, <laughs> but I bet that little brush would be in there. And I wouldn't even have to use any gas in the car to get it. See, if I have had practice spinning off of bats before, then I would just be, you know, rolling this off as a bat. But I don't. I usually spin off of roving so that's what I'm doing here I think that could be my next um, like spinning technique that I practice is uh, spinning off of a bat this up so much. It's kind of hard to pull through here.
all in one. Come on, all in one. Let's go. Oh, yeah. We got it all off in one without any. Oh, yep. Except it's going to break right there. <laughs> oh, well. Yeah. So there's the light green and the teal for the other ply. And I think this is going to look so cool. Look at this fluffy goodness. <laughs> I love it so much. So yeah, we've got the dark green with the black and the teal with the light green and it looks spectacular on the camera. So let me flip this around so I can give you a better peek at what I have here. So I have these bins overflowing because, like I said before, I don't want to compact the fiber. I want it to stay nice and light and airy. Uh, but yeah, we've got, these are some of the small bits that came off the blending board that I have on top. But yeah, black with the dark green. And same thing here, some of the small bits from the blending board. Teal with the light green. And I think it's, oh yeah, it's going to look great. Because where's that sample? Here's the sample of all of this combined. You know, this is apply, this is apply, applied together. So you can see all those colors showing up in here. So that's the goal, uh, is to get there. So, oh, I'm so excited. So that concludes the fiber preparation. The next step up is to actually spin this. So stay tuned on the channel for the next video where we discuss the spinning stage of this whole process on the way to the librarian vest.